שבוע טוב. אה, גוטבוך. I want to tell story number 131 of the Shibche Habal Shem Tov, the oldest source ever published of Baal Shem Tov stories. The title of the story is Habal Shem Tov Bechassidei Mezhibush. The Baal Shem Tov and the Chassidim of Mezhibush. Why are these men called, men called Chassidim? Is if at the beginning of the story they have not yet become Chassidim of the Baal Shem Tov. Well, maybe it refers to that they were pious men, uh, you know, righteous Jews, or the fact that they were due to become Hasid in many ways, they're called Hasidim from the beginning. This is a story of when the Baal Shem Tov first arrived in the community of Mezhibush, and he was not seen as an important person in their eyes, was not regarded very highly by the Hasidim that lived in Mezhibush, that is to say, Rav Zev Kotzes and Rav David Farkas. Well, it was the name Baal Shem, Baal Shem in those days were these uh, itinerant Jews traveling from place to place in uh, Central and Eastern Europe that would prevent people from the danger of the mazikim, these uh, evil spirits. They would heal people through spiritual means. They used um, uh, kameot, kameos or amulets, and uh, shemos kedoshim, mystical names of God, and other segulos. So, the way the Hasidim, this uh, pious scholar Jews of uh, of Mezhibush, a tzaddik should be somebody of a higher level than that. They didn't didn't click with them the name Baal Shem. So they had a student who was a gaon. He was a great scholar, and this uh, student became sick. He was a good man. He was a righteous Jew. And um, his teachers, Rav uh, Zev Kotzes and Rav David Vorkes, came to visit him. And he was not feeling well, and he asked for the Baal Shem Tov, who should come and heal him. And they did not want to. But as he became weaker and uh, he got worse, they, acceded, they, they accepted to call the Baal Shem Tov. But they told him, whatever he tells you, you must let us know. When the Balshemtov arrived, he asked for everyone in the house to leave, to be left alone with the patient. However, there was a young kid who hid somewhere and did not leave the house, put an ear to hear what the Balshemtov says. And so the Balshemtov says to the patient, I'm sorry. But it's due for you to die, and I cannot do a tikkun, I cannot change it. The man gave his video, his confession, told something about the Balshemtov, that they told the Balshemtov something about his life that he needed to, co to correct some problem, and he said, I wanted to rectify this before I die. What am I going to do now? The Balshemtov said, Don't worry, I will see to it that you will have no problems with this matter and I will make sure you come into Gan Eden. Do not reveal to anyone the words I am telling you now. And the Baal left. And since the, the rabbis, the teachers of this man came back, they asked him, what did he say? He refused to tell them. So the kid came out from his hiding and told them. Then they asked him, is that so? Is that true? He said, yes. They were astonished. How would he know what's going on Lemala up there to know who will or will not be accepted in Gan Eden and that he can intervene and change that? So they made an agreement and they make this Cholet, this, this, this sick man, make an agreement with them, shook hands on this agreement that when he passes away, he will let them know how he's treated up there. What happened to him? Does he go into Gan Eden? Does he not? Let's see. Let's test it. Well, unfortunately, the man did pass away. And then he came to them, a dream, and revealed to them that indeed he had gone into Gan Eden. And he did not see there the Baal Shem Tov. And 
He did not know how he was led into the net and why was the door open to him, but he realized he has no place there. Because when he sits in one place, somebody comes and claims the place and push him aside and he goes somewhere else and somebody claims the place and they push, shove him somewhere else. And he would be run from place to place until he had no place left to go. And he was really sad and it bothered him and he did not know the why, what was going on. So he said, I meditated in my mind that the Baal Shem Tov had promised me to come into Gan Eden. But I have no makom menucha, I have no place to rest. And he I felt so bothered by it. Then he says, once I saw the Bnei Heichala, the big Talmide Chachamim, they came into this Heichal, into this heavenly palace, and I went with them. And as soon as they came in, I jumped and I grabbed a place in the table. And they pushed me, pushed me, pushed me until I was out of sitting places and I had to stand next to the table and I see the Baal Shem Tov sitting with them, giving them Divrei Torah. And he asked this kush, this kushia, this kasha, this difficult question. And he asked the ones present, the Bnei Chales, this great Talmud Chacham in whose souls have gone up to Gan Eden that are still only learning Torah to serve Hashem and to become one with Hashem through that learning. So he asked them, what's the question to this kasha, to this dif what's the answer to this kasha, what is the tiruts, the explanation? They did not know. So the Baal Shem Tov gave, them to, gave it to them. And then each one left. Then the man who is telling this in the dream to the two Hasidim says, I asked the Baal Shem Tov, why do I not have a place in Gan Eden? And Baal Shem Tov said to me, he says, because you made an agreement and you shook hands on it and you have not fulfilled your agreement. This Talmud concludes his words, telling his teachers, I immediately came to you in this dream. As soon as I hear the Baal Shem Tov telling me I didn't fulfill my word, I came here. And he told them, exactly what was the kasha, the, the difficult question the Baal Shem Tov had for the Bnei Echala, for the the, the the scholarly Jews up in heaven. And what was the tirits, what was the explanation, the answer to the difficult question that the Baal Shem Tov gave in Gan Eden. Immediately, that night when they had this dream was, was uh, Shabbos, Shabbat, by Seudah Shelishit, by the third meal of Shabbos, they came to the Baal Shem Tov. And at the Baal Shem Tov's table, in Mezhibush, they hear the same Davar Torah and the same Kasha, the same question, difficult matter that he, the Baal Shem Tov is asking about. So the Hasidim offer the answer, and the Baal Shem Tov tells them, I know that the Mes, the man, the man who died, Mes me in Hebrew, the, 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 the dead man told you. From that day on, they became closer to the Baal Shem Tov. They realized who he is. They become his disciples. The Rav of our community says the author of the Shibchei Baal Shem Tov. He means Rav Gedali of Linitz said that the man was really admitted into Gan Eden. He sat by the, a place close to the gate of, uh, of Gan Eden. And there, every time his Neshama had an Aliyah, this light shone upon him. So he had the illusion of being inside Gan Eden and not exactly having a place to sit. He found the, the right place by the gates of Gan Eden. I don't know the source of the story, but the last part is from Rab Gedali of Linitz. I am telling all the stories of the Baal Shem Tov here in the channel, once in English, once in Spanish, every Motsi Shabbos. Please give a like, subscribe, tell your friends, tell Baal Shem Tov stories. I appreciate all contributions to keep the channel going. Um, my efforts of translating, not only to tell the stories, but I am also working on the translation from the original in Hebrew into Spanish with the aim to edit, translate, edit, and publish for the first time the entire book, the Ship Hebel Shem Tov in Spanish translation. I appreciate all contributions, links in the description. May you all enjoy all the blessings of this Lakba Omer and prepare from now till receiving the Torah in Shavuos. And our prayers for our Jewish brethren in Eretz Israel, 
in these difficult times of danger, as well as for our Jewish brethren all around the world. Shavua Tov, a good Tevoch.